So good morning, everybody, and welcome to Ask the Expert SBA Disaster Loan Assistance for Hurricane Zeta, featuring Roberto Baltanato. My name is Katie Weldon, and I'm the Program Director for the Mississippi Gulf Coast Chamber of Commerce. If this is the first time attending one of our events, if you hover over your screen, you'll see a chat box and a Q&A box. Please ask your questions in the Q&A box, and you can also submit those anonymously. I want to invite you to consider joining our chamber. Great benefits, a lot of things that can help your business, and more information on our benefits can be found on our website at mscoastchamber.com. Now, I would like to thank our sponsors for today's events, Memorial, Hancock Whitney, and the City of Biloxi, and we're going to take a brief moment to hear from them. To the people stepping up in the face of an unprecedented challenge, we say thank you. Thank you for everything you're doing to serve our communities and keep us safe. To the people of Hancock Whitney, thanks for being the ones our clients can count on the comforting face in the window, the trusted advisor, getting it done for the people we serve. Because even though it feels like everything has changed right now, it's reassuring to see that some things haven't. I'm Heather. I'm RJ. I'm Sinead. I'm Stephen with Hancock Whitney. I'm Zanae with Hancock Whitney, and I'm here to help. We'll get through this the same way we always do, together. Thank you so much to our sponsors again, Memorial Hospital, Hancock Whitney, and the City of Biloxi too. We really appreciate it. So before I turn it over to Roberto, um, our mission, of course, at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Chamber is to connect, inform, advocate, and develop. And we are able to do that through programs such as these, thanks to our generous sponsors. And like I said before, if you are not a member of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Chamber, we would love to discuss with you all of the benefits of our membership. And if you want more information, you can go to our website, mscoastchamber.com. The Q&A uh, box is located below and you can submit your questions anonymously, but we please ask in the chat box and in the question and answer box that you do not submit any personal or any identifying, identifying information that's just for your protection because the chat box can be downloaded after this and is public information. Make sure to check into this event on Facebook and you can do that on your phone, on your Facebook app. If you go to create a status, you can hit check in. Check into the Mississippi Gulf Coast Chamber of Commerce and select this event to prove to your bosses, friends, dogs, cats that you actually were productive today and you did something to better yourself. So join us for our upcoming events. We're going to include those links in the chat box as well. Our next Ask the Expert is actually next week, and that's featuring Memorial Hospital um, employee um, Director of Employee Health, Cindy Hansen. And we'll be talking all about the COVID vaccine. So this is your opportunity to ask an actual medical expert about the COVID vaccine, get factual information. So please don't miss that. That is a complimentary event. And we'd love to see you. That's next Thursday. And those links are in the chat box. I would now like to thank our CEO, Ms. Adele Lyons for joining us this morning. Good morning, Adele. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Roberto, for joining us today. Um, you know, I used to spend a fair amount of time in Miami. I used to work for the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, which okay. is a big um, partner there in Miami and was here on the Gulf Coast as well because we were a Knight Ritter newspaper. So um, love spending some time down in Miami a couple, several times a year for several years. So I'm uh, glad to have you today. Um, you know, I think certainly here on the coast, people know disaster and they know SBA has role in disaster loans. Uh, but I think we have to remind people the difference between the regular SBA mission and duties and what the disaster arm of the organization does. 
and also it was, um, you know, quite a, a lengthy time between Hurricane Zeta and the actual declaration from the president. So I, I think people may have forgotten or not realized that they are, uh, there are resources that are available to them now. And I'm so glad to have you today to help our business community understand that. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you, Adele. And um, as the expert is a program designed for professionals to gain insight from top industry leaders on hot topics and best business practices, because of course, Roberto reached out to us and thank goodness he did, because this is something that our community needs. We've had many phone calls about assistance from Hurricane Zeta. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, and all that you provide our communities, not only businesses, but also residential, all your resources that stays up in your brain. We really appreciate you keeping up with all that for all of us. So we don't have to. So before I turn it over to him with his presentation, I'm actually going to show you a quick video that will explain what the SBA is, which is the Small Business Administration, and it'll just go into a little bit more, just give you an intro before we turn it over. An idea, a concept, a plan, a dream, that's how businesses start. With the help of the U.S. Small Business Administration, businesses transform from a home office to a global operation, a double oven setup to a six-person bakery, concept to manufacturing, and from contemplating closure to not just surviving, but thriving. That's the power of the SBA. We make small business our business by being an ally, an advocate, a mentor, a coach, an educator, a friend to ambitious and passionate entrepreneurs. And we're igniting change, sparking action, so businesses across the nation can confidently start, grow, expand, and recover. SBA, empowering small businesses, empowering the American dream. All right, and on that note, Roberto, I turn it over to you. Thank you, Katie, appreciate it. And so welcome everybody. Thank you for being here today, particularly to our sponsors, to the chamber and everybody else who's making this possible. It is truly appreciated uh, because getting the word out and empowering people with information is what my purpose here today is. And so picking up on that last note, if you will, on that video with regards to empowerment, I'm going to be sharing a, a short presentation where I'm going to be walking you uh, through what the SBA does when disaster strikes. Uh, and so allow me to quickly put my screen on. Uh, there we go. And can we see that, Katie? Yes. Okay, excellent. And so the SBA, uh, in coordination with the Mississippi Gulf Board uh, Chamber of Commerce today, like I said, is going to be a, a, a providing you or empowering you with information to connect, to inform, and you can advocate, and we hope that you're going to develop. And so utilizing, if I may, uh, that motto from the chamber, I think it ties directly with um, what the SBA disaster assistance is. And so I am part of an office called the Office of Disaster Assistance. I am going to be telling you a little bit about us. Uh, Adele mentioned that the SBA is there on an everyday basis. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how our day-to-day -day operation ties with what the Office of Disaster Assistance does. Obviously, we're going to get to business and we're going to talk about what available programs and services are in order to help you recover from hurricane setup. And so I want to be specific in terms of the information that I'll be providing today. Although in general terms, it applies to any type of disaster, the help that we're offering today, it's specific to those who suffered, whether it was physical damage or economic damage from hurricane setup. And then obviously we're gonna to get to what we came for, which is I'm going to encourage you and tell you how is it that you can apply. And last but not least, then we'll have a little Q&A session and I'll, I'll give you, or I'll, I'll hope uh, to empower you with some resources and information uh, that you can walk away with. Uh, should you have any questions, by all means, please post them through the chat and Katie is gonna be monitoring that and we're gonna be covering your questions and inquiries uh, either throughout or at the end when we come to the Q&A session. Uh, and so the U.S. Small Business Administration, particularly the Office of Disaster Assistance, our mission is to empower you, to offer you with affordable, long-term, 
low interest loans, disaster loans, in this case, like I said, for Hurricane Seta. And so this is available for business of all sizes, uh, private nonprofit organizations, homeowners and individuals and renters uh, to either repair or replace damaged property, whether it is real estate or contents, personal property, machinery, equipment, inventory, uh, and those assets that your business needs in order to operate. The idea behind this program, which was designed by Congress, is to help you get up on your feet and make the local economy stronger by helping you in the long-term recovery. And so, we are part of the Southeast region. We cover the states of Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Our office is located in Atlanta, Georgia. And from there, anytime there is a disaster, we deploy. We deploy physically. Typically, we are on your, on your neighborhood going door to door and providing these types of, of presentations on a, on a public forum where you can assist and ask questions. The same way we're going to do that today, virtually, obviously, because of the current conditions. Um, after a disaster, all of the SBA resources come up together to help those impacted, in this case, those of you. Um, we have, what we do, we don't do alone, without a doubt. Uh, the SBA is part of a comprehensive group of partners, being our regional offices, our district office, the SBDCs, which is the Small Business Development Centers, the Women, the Women Business Centers, and SCOPE, which is a group of retired professionals that provide mentoring to individuals like you. These groups come together, and this is the first tool that I'm going to provide you here, with the ability to help you reconstruct financial records, prepare your statements, and complete the SBA disaster loan application at no cost. And so if any of you needs assistance with any of these items, whether it is to put together your financial records or prepare your statements or, or just to guide you through the application process, you can reach out to any one of these individuals, obviously starting with your chambers of commerce, which are key in all of these. I think that's more the most important resource that we have, and this meeting today proves it, is the fact that we can get directly to the fiber of the community through the chambers. And so by the same token, we encourage you to come to the chamber and seek that assistance and seek that information that is going to help you stronger. Uh, we, uh, through those groups, also provide you with assistance to um, to apply, to, to cover that application, whether you have been approved or declined or whether your application is withdrawn. And that may happen when you are asked for some sort of action and that action doesn't take place within the application portfolio, let's call it that way. The application seeks a moment in time where it is automatically withdrawn out of the system. That doesn't mean that the process ends there. You can come back and reactivate that application. You can come back even if you're declined and appeal. As a matter of fact, we do encourage you uh, if you are declined to appeal, because you could be declined for technicalities, could be the wrong zip code, something as simple as that that may have not been may have been overlooked at the time of the application may lead to a declination, but that not, doesn't necessarily mean that is the end of the road. You can appeal and you should appeal. Um, and we also have other resources that we can provide you with through the federal government because this is a presidential declaration. And we'll speak a little bit about that. Last but not least, we are able to provide you through, again, this group of resources, management and counseling services to help your business thrive, uh, particularly in this case, to help you on that long-term recovery. Uh, it takes a lot of planning, and we suggest that you think about it in stages to be able to maximize the loan. Uh, and we'll talk about those benefits in a moment. Um, like I said earlier, this is specifically for Hurricane Seta recovery, for those who suffered um, physical damage and or economic uh, uh, damage related to the hurricane. The declared counties are in your screen, uh, George, Green, Hancock, Harrison, Jackson, Stone counties in Mississippi, and these counties are eligible for physical and economic injury disaster loans. So again, if you suffered that structural damage and that economic injury because of the storm and you're located in one of these counties, you can apply for both. Now, small businesses, most nonprofit uh, organizations in the adjacent counties can apply only for the economic injury disaster loan. What do I mean by economic injury? Any gaps in operations, anything that may have uh, in relation to the hurricane that may have kept you from producing revenue, that is an economic injury, for example. And so if you're in that set of, of businesses and located in Forest, Pearl River, 
Perry and Wayne in Mississippi, Mobile and Washington in Alabama, or St. Tammany in Louisiana, you can apply for the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Important to keep in mind, and on this and the next slide, you'll see that at the bottom, is the deadlines. Everything has a deadline. Uh, typically, we have a 60-day dead, uh, day deadline rather for physical damage applications and a 90-day deadline for the economic injury loan. So you know, in this case, we have March the 1st, which is coming up. It's going to be the deadline for physical damage applications for help related to Hurricane Sita. And if you're planning on applying for economic injury, which is working capital, is October the 1st. Keep in mind, you can apply for both, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. Interest rates. Um, this is the core uh, concern of many individuals. What differentiates the SBA disaster assistance from a typical um, financial uh, loan is the fact that our criteria is different. How we um, how we review your application and how we qualify you into one of these loans. It's a much different process. Our starting with our uh, low interest loan. These are a 1.188% homeowners or renters loans, as low as 1.188. Business of all sizes, they have as low as 3%, and nonprofit organizations is as low as two and three quarters. And so, as you can see, that's what differentiates us from a standard um, financial loan. Uh, again, we encourage you to consider uh, a loan. Why should you consider a loan? And in a moment, we'll, we'll give you plenty of examples. But the main example is, is a tool in your toolbox to help you with that recovery. The beauty of this is you don't have to take the loan if approved. And we're going to expand that in a moment. But I encourage you to grab that information and put it in the back of your mind as a backup plan if you already have a plan or as your plan for that long-term recovery. Now, Interest rates for the economic injury disaster loan for the small business uh, businesses rather in small agricultural cooperatives, it's as low as 3%. Now, nonprofit organizations, they can get that 2.75% interest on these disaster loans. And again, the deadlines are at the bottom, March 1st being the one coming up for physical disaster applications. The types of disaster. So I already covered, um, we have, as I said, business, disaster loans, which is physical disaster, and we have economic injury disaster loans, which is in essence working capital for those business interruptions. Um, the purpose obviously for the business physical disaster loan is to help you repair or replace real estate equipment, furniture, those physical assets that your business has and you need to operate in order to open those doors, that loan can help you replace or repair those items. And then the economic injury loan, and this is why I told you, you can apply to both, is that working capital. That capital you need in order to operate, to pay your expenses, to maintain those expenses and, and to be able to commit to maintain your commitments rather uh, and keep those expenses that would keep you operational. So that's how those two factors come into play. Physical, structural damages and economic injury operating capital. You, on both of those, you have up to $2 million to apply for. Um, and unless, of course, your business qualifies for a major source of employment, that is the cap, if you want to think in those terms, as to how much you can get from one of those uh, loans. And then you have home loans. Uh, this home, um, uh, business owners and employees are homeowners and renters. And so we do have assistance for those as well. You can tie those up as part of that plan because you want to, you want to think about your staff, about yourself as well. What is it that I can do on the home front? And so if you're a homeowner, um, you can apply for a home disaster loan, which is again on those physical disasters to replay, to repair or replace real property. If there is a uh, a wall that you need to rebuild, if there is a uh, you know some major damage on your roof that needs to be replaced. Now, important at this point, and I typically don't speak for other organizations, but I will mention this: uh, this is a presidential declaration, which means you have. FEMA and the SBA on the ground. Many of you have already uh, heard about FEMA. And so what FEMA does in, co in relation to this is FEMA comes in and provides you with a grant, not a loan. That is money that is given to you to make those immediate repairs, to make sure you have a door, a window, to make sure that your home is livable. This loan, the one that I'm explaining to you now from the SBA, helps you make those structural, the, those permanent structural um, fixes or repairs that you need in order to make your house or your business 
uh, operating or livable in the long-term picture. And so that is the difference between the two. If you're a renter, you can apply as well. If you're a homeowner who rents, you can apply as well. Renters can apply up to $40,000 to repair or replace personal property. Homeowners can apply up to $200,000 to repair or replace real property. Now, um, above all this, we spoke about the business physical disasters, the economic injury loans, the homeowners and renters. You can apply if you are a business, private, nonprofit organization, or a homeowner for mitigation funds. Um, disasters are not getting any easier. They're getting more complex and they're getting stronger, unfortunately. <clears throat> Over the last three or four years, we have experienced a series of disasters that have proven that. And so we strongly encourage you to think about mitigation. What is it that you can do to protect the property against future damages from similar disasters? And so the SBA wants you to rebuild stronger. And that's why we offer that option within the disaster loan to opt to give you mitigation uh, loans for mitigation process projects. It can be up to 20% of the verified physical damage. And homeowners are limited to the $200,000 cap that I mentioned to you, to you about. And so those are factors you need to keep in mind uh, when considering a mitigation project. Uh, something that is, uh, and again, this is why we're different than um, a regular type of loan uh, through a bank, is we will not require you to have any estimates for the repairs. Uh, we have obviously worked in, in coordination with local authorities, with your local emergency management uh, agencies, uh, with the state, the, the state of Mississippi emergency management agencies is very much connected with FEMA and the SBA. And so we utilize the assessments that they have done. There are eyes and ears at the community level, and we know then what areas and to what degree destruction has occurred. And based on that information, we provide you or we expedite, if you will, that assistance out to you. Um, Important to say about the mitigation that the funds cannot be used to either upgrade or expand the business or the home or to make additions. And of course, that is a conversation that I hope you will have with your loan officer, okay? There are restrictions and eligibility uh, requirements, obviously, as part of the loan. Uh, these are federal funds. They come straight from uh, the uh, federal government. And so we need to be good stewards, if you will, of these tax dollars. And so only uninsured and otherwise uncompensated hurricane setup related losses, and I'm being specific here for that reason, will be deemed eligible for these declarations. Secondary homes, vacation homes, or property pleasure boats or airplanes, recreational vehicles or similar property are not eligible unless these are used for business purposes. Uh, qualified rental properties may be eligible. And so we encourage you, again, I made that example about uh, you may very well have a business, you may have a bakery, but you also have a home that you rent. If you have a qualified rental property, you may be eligible and that should be part of the conversation with your loan officer. Um, applicants who have not complied with terms uh, of previous SBA loans may not be eligible. And I underscored in, in bold may. Even if you have had difficulties in the past with an SBA loan, I encourage you to apply and have that conversation with a loan officer to see what is it that we can do. Uh, we can provide you with other avenues or resources as well. Um, these include borrowers then who do not did not maintain flood and or hazard insurance. And we'll talk about how is it that um, normally you should consider having that flood and hazard insurance. But when you enter into an SBA loan, it is one of the requirements that we have. And we'll talk about it in the next slide or two. Last but not least, and these are very important factors, we're going to look at your credit history. Um, now, um, we will qualify you based on a credit history that is acceptable to SBA. And notice how I'm saying that, because uh, while we look at the standard credit rating, we don't necessarily use those standard credit ratings to um, to uh, approve or to make you eligible for that approval consideration. Uh, we look at all the factors. Again, that's part of the conversation your loan officer will have with you, whether or not you have been affected by previous, uh, by prior incidents and how you have developed and how you have recovered from those. Uh, what is your current status in terms of financial standing? Uh, what are your challenges and opportunities? All of those factors will be looked at in terms of uh, evaluating your credit history. Um, repayment will be based on your ability to repay. And so we're going to look again at all those factors, everything comes into one, and the loan officer, it's going to make an evaluation on that ability to repay, and that is how we're going to set the terms on these loans. Um, not only, as I said, these are low interest loans, but they're flexible, and this is uh, an example of how flexible these loans are.
By the way, as I'm as I'm going through these slides and I speak about these different factors, um, I hope you have pen and paper and you're writing down questions. I love questions, and so if you do have some, I will not be able to discuss cases in particular, but we can discuss the overall information that I'm presenting today. Collateral and insurance. And so, as I said, uh, we're going to be good stewards of the uh, um, of these tax dollars. And so collateral is required to the extent possible for a physical disaster loan. Uh, whether it is a physical disaster loan, an economic injury over 25,000, you will be required to the extent possible to have collateral. Um, now, you will not be declined uh, if you have if you don't have the ability to provide collateral. However, <clears throat> we are going to have that conversation where we're going to require the applicant to pledge what is available in terms of collateral. Um, borrowers whose damaging or collateral property is in a special flood air hazard area, and being that we live in coastal areas, this is many of those areas that you're in now, uh, will be required to purchase and maintain flood insurance. Um, Obviously, this is something that many people think about a financial burden because it's an added cost. However, it is something, and I think by now we have all become experts, if you will, on the benefits of something like this. When disaster strikes, these two items come into play and will be great tools to have for your recovery. And so we strongly encourage you to consider them even if you do not apply for an SBA loan. Um, in that event, then the SBA is going to require that flood insurance coverage be lesser than either the total of the disaster loan, the insurable value of the property, or the maximum insurance available. And again, those are the three factors that we're going to take into consideration uh, when determining your in flood insurance co coverage. Um, Again, we, we encourage you to visit uh, um, those websites and I'm gonna be providing you websites at the end that will give you plenty of this information in regards to how you can get flood insurance even if you do not apply for an SBA loan. The benefits of a loan, of a disaster loan. Um, disaster happens and many of us are in a situation where uh, existing challenges already become even more overwhelming. And so we think about, oh my God, how, how am I going to get out? and uh, am I going to have to get into debt in order to get out of this? Well, the short answer is this is good debt, if you want to think in those terms. Again, that is why the SBA has developed this program where it is a very affordable, long-term, low-interest loans. We're a cash flow lender. And so for those businesses that have been affected by disaster, in this case by Hurricane Seta, we will provide you that working capital loan, low interest, no cost to apply. There are no closing costs. Um, you can uh, withdraw at any point with no penalties uh, from this loan. You can take it. You don't have to take it or you can take it in segments. Think about if you have a project, if you have different phases of that project, you could actually monetize that project and distribute that loan money into those segments. And that's how you can take the money. Um, that is a major difference in how you how we compare to a regular financial loan. Um, no prepayment penalty fees. Of course, uh, it's Uncle Sam and we want you to pay back. And if you pay early, that'll be great. But there are no prepayment penalty fees. Funds are available prior to insurance settlements, and this is an, an important point. Um, I said at the very beginning that we encourage you to apply, and at this stage, many of you may already have put in your insurance claims and may be waiting for that insurance response. Well, no, do not wait any longer. You can actually submit that application to the SBA today, if you haven't done so, before that response from your insurance comes into play. Uh, we're not going to determine your availability or the amount you pay based on that. However, we're going to ask you about that claim. And when that money comes from the insurance, <clears throat> obviously, if you have received those funds from the SBA, you can utilize those funds to repay that portion of the insurance money that came in. Uh, and so you could, again, repay that loan with that insurance fund. And that will be part of that conversation you'll have with your loan officer. Um, you may be eligible for refinancing and relocation. And so we're going to talk a, lot, a little bit about that because um, business owners may have the need to refinance or to relocate, uh, whether it is voluntarily or involuntarily. And we, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, Again, we spoke about mitigation funds and how these can be beneficial going forward. We encourage you to consider those strongly. The first payment is deferred. You will have a one year from the date in which you signed the promissory note to start payment this loan. So that is one of the biggest 
benefits of applying for an SBA disaster loan. You don't have to worry in essence for one whole year after you sign that promissory note. The damage estimates are not required. As I said before, federal and state assistance may stop um, you may have, and I believe uh, you may have assistance, whether it is a localized county level or state level assistance or other programs from FEMA, for example. But every, every one of those programs has an end date. Uh, and so we want you to consider those end dates when applying for an SBA loan. Uh, the loan can be modified. And so if anything happens as part of your recovery and um, God forbid uh, a major life changing event takes place, you come back to us, we take that into consideration. We're going to have a conversation to then modify your loan, depending on the circumstance. Um, you may be eligible for referral to a grant program. I spoke about declinations earlier today. If for some reason we are unable to pair you with a uh, an SBA disaster loan, uh, we're not going to say no and thank you, goodbye. We're going to find you avenues. And one of the first avenues that we look at is FEMA. And so we're going to refer you back to FEMA to see if any one of those grants that are available with FEMA uh, can help you. We're going to also refer you to one of those regional SBA partners that we have to find out what other programs and the community level are there that we can uh, help uh, with. And so uh, last but not least, it's that obligation to take the loan that I spoke about. Um, it is important to mention that when it comes to the terms, the law restricts businesses in credit with credit available elsewhere to a minimum of seven year um, term loan. And so again, if you do have credit available elsewhere, that is something you should have as part of your conversation with the loan officer because your terms may be lesser than the 30 years. Just want to make sure that we're clear on that. And then again, things you can jot down as part of your conversation with your loan officer. How can you apply? So I, I spent these last few minutes in telling you all about these wonderful assistance. And so uh, it, because it is a presidential declaration, we have a two-step process for you to apply. The first thing you need to do if you haven't done so is register with FEMA by visiting disasterassistance.gov disasterassistance.gov or through the FEMA app or by calling FEMA at 800-621-3362. Uh, and then right off the bat, you will apply with SBA. So it's a one-two punch. Register with FEMA, apply with SBA by visiting us at sba.gov forward slash disaster sba.gov forward slash disaster. Um, loan applications, paper applications may be obtained also by calling us. Um, as I said, typically we are on the ground. We are going, we are physically at a location that you can come and talk to us. There is no difference. We are now simply a phone call away. So our virtual disaster loan outreach center or the business recovery center is open seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you can reach us by calling 800-659-2955. 800-659-2955, or emailing us at foce-help at sba.gov. And again, keep in mind those deadlines. Um, and so this is very important to highlight that uh, regardless of what you do, even if you think you don't need FEMA, you should register with FEMA as part of the presidential declaration, because depending on the outcome of your conversation with SBA, you may end up being referred to FEMA and having that registration ahead of time is going to be critical for the process. And so by now, if I may, Katie, if you have any questions that uh, the audience may have posed or for of your own, I'll be happy to answer them. Absolutely. We do have a couple of questions coming in. And while we're waiting for some more, once again, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. You can submit those questions anonymously if you would like. But Roberto, um, let's see, the first one says, what if I decide to relocate? So that's important because, and let me figure out this, let me take out the... Uh, how do we take out the, the screen? I'd love to speak with you guys. Uh, if you can help me there, Katie, can you see my face or? Yeah, sorry. I was muted. Um, at, the, at the top or the bottom, you'll see a red button that says, um, stop share. Let me see if I can. Oh, here we go. I think I just, there you go. You. thank yeah, you so much. I appreciate <laughs> You're it. Yep. And so, yes, indeed, you may use the SBA disaster loan funds to relocate. Now, um, it's going to be a conversation that you're going to have with your loan officer. I, sp I said earlier, whether it was voluntarily or involuntary relocation, that is going to determine the amount of the loan that you will get in terms of relocation funds. But the short answer is yes, you may use an SBA disaster loan to relocate if you have, well, whether it is voluntarily or involuntarily. Great. And keep those questions coming in. 
Our next question is, what should we expect after you click the submit button on the application page? It's, uh, it's typically a concern that many of the applicants have because there's a level of anxiety, of course, in terms of what's going what's to happen next. And so the fact that you send that information, first of all, we want to make sure that you come together with one of the agencies, such as your Chamber of Commerce, to gather all the documentation that you need, your financial statements, your uh, income tax statements, uh, and those things that you will need as part of the application process, and then apply. You know, everything starts with one step, which is you going on to sba.gov forward slash disaster and submit in that application. So when you click on submit, um, we're going to start reviewing your credit, as I said before. We're going to look at those credit, uh, uh, your credit history uh, in order to conduct an inspection to verify the losses. Now, as I said before, typically we would do that in person. Now we are coordinating with the authorities and obviously we will have some questions with you as well in terms of those losses so we can understand those current conditions. Um, then there's gonna be a verification process where SBA is going to verify the total physical loss to your disaster damage property. Uh, if you tell us that you suffered $50,000 damage uh, worth of damages, we're going to verify those against obviously the available assessments that we have with the agencies. A loan officer is going to determine your eligibility. We spoke about you know those eligibility factors that we had before, your credit available elsewhere, uh, for example. Um, they're going to review the information that you provided and obviously uh, is, our goal is going to be a right to decision within weeks. And so that, depending on the volume, obviously, will determine the time in which it will take for that loan officer to uh, end. The, um, your position in providing that information will determine the time in which that, that application turnaround time will have. Uh, last but not least, and our loan officer is going to contact you to discuss those loan recommendations, next steps, and you'll be advised in writing about the loan. And so that all of that is happening, that wheel, if you will, it's moving behind the scenes. So when you click on send, the will be a time where you're not going to hear from us, but that doesn't mean that your application is not being processed. These things are taking place behind the scenes, and you will be contacted by an officer. Um, again, if you have questions throughout the process, you can contact the Virtual Disaster Loan Assistance Center for those questions. Um, and then the, the third step is the closing of the loan. Uh, and I'm going through my notes to make sure that I don't miss a bit in this one. So um, we're going to prepare and send that loan closing document for your signature. That is the moment where you can uh, review those documents. We encourage you to seek assistance in reviewing them through either one of our partners or a partner of your own. Um, making sure that uh, once you receive, once we receive rather, those signed closing documents, um, the initial disbursement will be made within five days. And so that is typically what happens when you reach that point. After you have reviewed the closing documents and you're satisfied with them and you sign and return, upon receipt within that next week business, five business days, that first disbursement will be made. Um, and again, to remember that um, a case manager is going to be assigned to your, to your uh, application. So that's going to be part of that step two. When you receive the call, you will learn who is the person that is assigned. And that is going to be the person that you should be going to for inquiries. Uh, and last but not least, then your loss may, your loan rather, may be adjusted uh, depending on your needs uh, after the closing uh, of, uh, depending on your change in circumstances. And this could be increasing the loan for unexpected repair uh, or reducing the loan due to additional insurance proceeds. And that's how flexible we are. And so that again is going to be part of that conversation. Um, that in essence is uh, how the process works once you click on send. Long, long answer and I hope it was not confusing. Not at all, not at all. And it's very pertinent information. And this is being recorded. So if you feel like you missed a question or if you have, any, or if you have a question, we're gonna have all these resources. And also on the uh, registration confirmations that were sent out, I believe it was the fact sheet, the three-step process, all of the, that information can be found in your emails too and will be sent in a follow-up email as well. All right, so next question, just to clarify, are the homeowners slash renter loans only available to small business owners? or are they for anybody that owns or rents and lives in the declared disaster area? Very good question indeed, because even though the audience and this uh, presentation is designed for the business community, the fact is that our help is available to individuals. Whether you're a homeowner or renter, you don't have to own a business to reach out to the SBA, but keep in mind, you have to do that two-step process, which is register with FEMA by visiting disasterassistance.gov and apply with SBA by going to sba.gov forward slash disaster. Perfect. All right. For those that are insured and are seeking a home disaster loan, 
is the loan recipient limited to the deficit stated on the insurance claim information or how is the maximum loan amount determined? Also, so would they need to submit additional information in order to qualify? So that's going to be part of the conversation with the loan officer. The short answer is we're going to take in consideration your insurance proceeds. What is it that you're uh, eligible for in that insurance in order to determine the loan amount? Uh, so short answer is yes, you will be um, uh, that loan amount from the SBA will be subject to your conversation regarding insurance proceeds. Excellent. Okay. Are freelancers, self-employed, home-based businesses, or one of the gig economy workers eligible for these loans? We definitely encourage you to reach out to the SBA. You should also uh, register with FEMA, remember, because you are el eligible. Obviously, there are going to be uh, documents that you will need to present to, to show that you are an independent contractor in this case, such as an Uber driver comes to mind. Um, you will be required to show that indeed you have that uh, registration, if you will, or affiliation to that business. So reach out to us, even if you think you're not eligible, even if you have doubts, give us a call, find out, you know, put those factors on the table and let us help you determine whether or not you're qualified. And if you're not qualified for an SBA, we're going to help you find avenues, as I said before. Excellent. So, Roberto, what can I do to be better prepared for future disasters? That's an important thing. And I, and I, I am one, I'm being in Florida, being in Miami, obviously, I am one that uh, always talk about preparedness and we want you to be prepared. If there is anything you can do in addition to seeking assistance today is also think about or change your thinking about what can you do to be better prepared. And it's very simple steps. You can go to ready.gov forward slash business or visit ready.gov forward slash plan. The difference between those two pages is obviously the one that's business is, is focused on what can you do to, uh, to prepare your business, uh, back up your documents, your important documents, in this case, obviously financial records. Uh, think about what hazards you have in your area and that applies for everyone. What is it that can impact your business today or your home today um, that you need to think about, whether it is a flood, whether it is a hurricane, whether it is a tornado or man-made, are you in a situation where your community may be experiencing situations as we're seeing today and you may have an interruption in your business? Um, and so, yes, we encourage you to business ready.gov forward slash business or ready.gov forward slash plan. If you're a business owner, part of your preparation should be how can you prepare your employees? What is it that you can do? And obviously it is by providing information to your employees so that they are able to come back to work as soon as you are able to after a disaster. That is a conversation that needs to be had today. Absolutely, and both of those links are actually in the chat right now. Thank you. Let's see, do you know how many people have taken advantage of these programs so far or how many are expected to? So in terms of numbers of people, no, I can tell you we are over the $6 million mark uh, for um, these declaration in your area. And so we know that there is a great need out there. Hence, the reason we are doing these connections, if you will, with the chambers, make sure the word gets out. And so there is uh, uh, available funds for you. And so we encourage you to apply if you haven't already. Excellent. And one last question. Can I apply for SBA assistance if I'm receiving assistance from an existing grant or another type of program? Good question. Good question. And so what we say is we encourage you to go ahead and talk to that agency or that, or that organization that is providing you the grant or the assistance and find out how that grant or that assistance may be affected. And I, incur, and I underscore the word may be affected if you apply for an SBA disaster loan. Uh, typically, that is something that will be obviously discussed with uh, your loan officer, but we encourage you to reach out to that agency first. Excellent. And while we're waiting for some more questions come in, if you have them, Roberto, do you have any parting words or final thoughts? And so, yes, again, uh, even if you think you didn't suffer enough uh, damages, whether it is physical or economic injury, reach out to us. Let us again present that information. Remember that at the end, uh, you can use these uh, as a learning experience. And at the end, you don't have to take the loan if you're approved. And so if there is anything, you will become very well informed. And by, you know, by presenting that application, you may very well discover that you did have the need that you may have not discovered, that you may have not been aware of rather. So yes, we encourage you to register with FEMA and apply with SBA today. Excellent. And Roberto, would it be okay if I shared this presentation with those that came today? 
Most definitely, um, most definitely. The very last uh, slide, which I didn't get to present, I think uh, it, it has actually uh, those pages and those phone numbers and email accounts that I mentioned throughout. Okay. And so by all means, if at the end of the day, you are unable to find this information, sba.gov forward slash disaster. Excellent. So thank you so much again, Roberto, for taking the time today. And of course, being so knowledgeable, we really depend on the SBA and of course, in our area, the Office of Disaster Assistance. So thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank I also um, want to thank our sponsor for today's event, Memorial Hospital, Hancock Whitney in the city of Biloxi. If you're interested in sponsoring our Ask the Expert programs, please feel free to reach out to me at katie at mscoastchamber.com. And also don't forget to join us for our upcoming events, including next week's Ask the Expert on COVID vaccine featuring our sponsor, Memorial Hospital. On that note, I want to thank you, Roberto, again, so much for joining us this morning. And this link, I mean, this video is recorded and will be posted to our YouTube page. So make sure you're following us on Facebook and uh, make sure you visit our website, mscoastchamber.com. Thank you so much, Roberto. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.